Shalom. Welcome back. Let's get back into the Word. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 26, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 32. Acts, chapter 26. Got your Bibles? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Context, okay? Uh, Paul has been apprehended uh, by the Roman government. Uh, he's being examined right now by King Agrippa. King Agrippa is over Judea. He's over uh, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin called Jews. Okay, they're in Caesarea. Uh, Paul appealed to Caesar. Uh, they wanted to bring him back to Jerusalem, but he didn't. Paul is an apostle. He's a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh, they accuse him of blasphemy, <laughs> uh, starting seditions and spreading stuff, not keeping the law of Moses. Uh, stuff they can't prove. <laughs> But nevertheless, he's been apprehended and he's been in jail now for a while. And he's pleaded his case to two other people. Now he's getting ready to plead his case again. King Agrippa said, you may speak for yourself. <coughs> Verse 2. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. So Paul uh, saying that, you know, he's grateful that he can uh, testify for himself about what he's being accused of by the Jews. The Jews are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. They are Jews. Most people think when you say Jews or say Jews, you're talking about all of Israel. That's not true. Only the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin are Jews, according to the scripture. If you read in the Old Testament, Israel was one kingdom, Solomon's sin, the kingdom became divided into two separate kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The Lord only left one kingdom, one tribe with Solomon, and that was the tribe of Benjamin. The rest of the ten tribes was of the northern kingdom. <coughs> the northern kingdom of Israel was referred to as Ephraim also. They sinned against the Lord, and the Lord scattered them amongst the Gentiles, and they were referred to as Gentiles or whatever location that they were in. Uh, some of the Jews also are scattered abroad in different location as well. But they are still referred to as Israel or Jews, mainly Jews. So Paul is testifying for himself against the accusations that Jews have uh, accused him of. These Jews that are accusing Paul do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They do not believe that Jesus died for their sins and rose on the third day. So uh, that's mainly why they have accused Paul. Verse 33. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. So Paul also is a Pharisee. And uh, so he was trained as a lawyer. He know the legal speak. <laughs> and how to conduct himself uh, as a lawyer in, inside of a courtroom. <laughs> so he is talking to Agrippa. And he said that uh, he knows that Agrippa is an expert in the customs and questions among the Jews. <coughs> Again, the Jews 
are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham uh, of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. They are the Jews, not all of Israel. So Paul is requesting that King Agrippa listen to what he has to say patiently. Verse 4, my manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. So he started out talking about his youth, his manner of life, and among his own nation. <coughs> his own nation are, are Jews. Again, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. He's of the tribe of Benjamin. But Paul also is a Roman citizen. But he said all the Jews know about him. He's, it's not a secret. Verse 5. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straight, straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. <clears throat> So Paul uh, confessed that he was religious. He was of a religious sect called the Pharisee. Jesus did not die for a religious sect. He did not come for Pharisees or Sadducees. He came for his people, uh, Judah. He's of the tribe of Judah. But he also came for all of Israel. <laughs> all of Israel didn't accept him. All of Judah didn't accept him. But some did. So that's the point that you need to understand and remember. Jesus did not come to start Christianity either. <laughs> he did not come to start a religion. Jesus is coming back for a people. Christianity is something started by the Rome, Roman government. They they announced that and, and, and pro pronounced that upon uh, the, the Jews, the Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, the Jews that followed Jesus, they called them Christian. The disciples didn't call themselves Christians. The Rome, people of Rome called them Christians. <laughs> That's what, and it's stuck, and it's still sticking today, but Jesus did not come to start Christianity. That's what you have to understand. So Paul starts out and says that, you know, he was a religious, uh, straightest sect of the religion. He lived a Pharisee. Verse 6, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. So he said, I'm being judge of the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. What is the hope of the promise? The hope of the promise uh, made to the fathers is the promise that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a covenant which still stands today. It hasn't changed. From Genesis to Revelation, the covenant is to Israel. It's to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God made a covenant with Abraham and said, to your seed, I'm going to give this land into your seed. All of the nations of the earth will be blessed. <coughs> Abraham didn't even have a child at that time. And he had a son with Hagar, the bond woman. God said, that's not the seed that I'm, I'm promising to you. You're going to have a seed. You're going to have a child with your wife, Sarah. So they had a, him and Sarah had a child, Isaac. And so when Isaac was born, Sarah said, get rid of the bond woman. Her son would not be heir with my son. So the Lord told Abraham, listen to Sarah, get rid of the bun woman. Y'all may think that's kind of rude, cruel, and hard, but that's the character and nature of God. God only chose Abraham and his seed, not Ishmael. Ishmael may be Abraham's seed, but he's not the seed of promise. Ishmael still exists today in the world. They are an enemy of God. They're not God's chosen people. Isaac is God's chosen people. Isaac is the son of the promise. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. They were twins. <clears throat> Rebecca was pregnant with them, and she inquired of the Lord of her pregnancy, 
The Lord told her, you have two manner of people in your womb. One will be stronger than the other. It's two different nations. And so when they were born, uh, the scriptures also said that the older will serve the younger. So when they were born, Esau was born first. The scripture said he came out hairy and red, red and hairy all over. And then Jacob came out second, holding on to Esau's heel. The scripture says that uh, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. And God hated Esau and loved Jacob. So God don't love everybody. Esau still exists in the world today. His name also is Edom. He's part of the ruling class in the world. Esau, Edom, exists in this world. People don't talk about him, but Jacob's name was changed to Israel. People talk about Israel, but they don't talk about Edom as if it doesn't exist. They exist, and people know who they are, and they know who they are. <laughs> Israel is God's chosen people. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The scripture said that uh, one would be stronger than the other. That means that Esau is stronger than Jacob right now. But the scripture also said that the older will serve the younger. That hasn't happened yet. That's a part of prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled. When the Lord Jesus comes back, Esau will serve Jacob, will serve Israel. The older will serve the younger. That's going to happen when the Lord Jesus comes back. Now, the people that are Israel are scattered all over the earth, all around the earth. The people in the land today called the nation of Israel, they're fake, they're phonies. They're not the real Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. They're not of the tribe of Judah. They, they are imposters. The scripture calls them the synagogue of Satan, they've taken over the land. They call themselves Jews and are not. They do lie. The real Hebrew Israelites are scattered to the four winds. We sinned against the Lord. The Lord, first he scattered the, the northern kingdom of Israel. Then he scattered the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. Jesus said that you will be led away captive into all nations. That's what happened to us. With the transatlantic slave trade, we were led away captive into all nations. We are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. The scripture says that you will be taken into Egypt again in ships. <laughs> That's what happened to us. That's who we are. I know you don't understand it or, or believe it because it hasn't been taught to you. All our, our language, knowledge, understanding, our heritage, <laughs> our identity, everything was stolen and taken away from us when we were brought to this country. We weren't allowed to read or write, so that's why we don't really know who we are. But we are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah, okay? And everything that has happened to us is according to Scripture according to prophecy, and we're not leaving. We're in the land of our captivity, and we're not leaving until the Lord Jesus comes back to get us. But he's coming back for those that believe in him. If you don't believe and accept him as Lord and Savior, you're going to die in your sins. Jesus is coming back for Israel. He's not coming back for Christians. He's not coming back he didn't come to start a religion. He's only coming back for his people. So Paul is talking about the promise of God made to our fathers. The promise was made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are our fathers. That's who we are. Paul is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Verse 7. Unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come for which hope sake King Agrippa I am accused of the Jews so he goes on to say unto which promise our 12 tribes he's talking about all the tribes of Israel it's 12 tribes 
I told you before, it was divided into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was ten tribes. They sinned against the Lord. The Lord scattered them amongst the Gentiles. They were referred to as Gentiles or whatever location that they were in. And the southern kingdom was referred to as Judah, as, as Jews, Judah and Benjamin, also referred to as Israel. So they were instantly serving God day and night for the hope to come, for which hope sake, King Agrippa, I'm accused of the Jews. So Paul is saying, I'm just believing in the hope to come of the Lord Jesus Christ that's prophesied in the scripture. That's why I'm accused of the Jews. <laughs> the Jews are the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. They're called Jews. Verse 8. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? So now he goes forth and talk about Jesus. It was prophesied that Jesus would be the Savior, the Messiah, the King of the Jews, the King of Israel. And that he would die on the cross, give his life for Israel for their sins, and would rise again the third day. And Paul asked the question, why it should be thought incredible that God should raise the dead. Verse 9, I barely thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So Paul is testifying that before he was doing everything in his power contrary uh, against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He didn't believe, he didn't accept what was being said about Jesus. And so he was totally against it himself. Verse 10, which thing I also did in Jerusalem and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. So he's telling uh, Agrippa, he said, this is what I did when I was in Jerusalem. Many of the saints, who are the saints? The saints is Israel. <laughs> it's all of Israel, all of the 12 tribes, period. It's not anybody else. It's not everybody else in the whole wide world. Christianity want to say that Jesus is coming back for everybody else in the whole wide world. Jesus is not coming back for everybody else in the whole wide world. The only people that are considered saints are Israel. Jesus is only coming back for Israel. Jesus said that many will come in my name and deceive many. Christianity is a form of the name of Christ. That's the name that's deceiving many. Jesus did not come to start Christianity. He's only coming back for Israel. He said, many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. He got authority from the chief priest to shut the saints, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. He had authority to shut them up in prison. When they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. He was against what? Stephen was saying, so he, uh, he, he, he was in, uh, in agreement for the death of Stephen that was preaching. Verse 11, and I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. <laughs> So Paul is continuing his testimony. He said, I punished them in every synagogue. I don't care where they were, where they worship, in the temple, in the synagogue, every synagogue, wherever the synagogue was, I, I, I punished them. Now the synagogue is what we call today church. And this church got its name, uh, what they call it today, from the Rome. Rome has counterfeited everything. There's a ruling class. And that ruling class is Rome. 
They were the ruling class during the days of Jesus, during the days of Paul, and they are still the ruling class now. The Japhet Gentiles are the ruling class. Go back and read Genesis chapter 10. They also the Ashkenaz. They're part of the ruling class. It's the people that call themselves Israel today. They're Ashkenaz. They're fake Jews. They're part of the ruling class. They're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven. That's not who Jesus is coming back for. Jesus is not coming back for the Roman Catholics. He's not coming back for Christians. He's coming back for Israel. So Paul is saying that I punished everybody, even in the synagogue. I compelled them to blaspheme, being exceedingly mad against them. I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Now when he says strange cities, what he's talking about is the northern kingdom of Israel uh, that sinned against the Lord. They were referred to as Gentiles. They were also referred to as strangers or foreigners or whatever land that they were living in. But that's who he's talking about. You have to understand that the only people that is, that the word of God is for and to is Israel. From the Old Testament to the New Testament. When Jesus ministered, he only ministered to Israel, to, to the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, and to some of the people of the northern kingdom that scattered, like the woman of Samaria, like the centurion. They were Hebrew Israelites of the northern kingdom, like this Seophonician woman. All of them were Hebrew Israelites of the northern kingdom. They were scattered abroad. And that's Jesus also ministered to him. And also in, in John, St. John chapter 17, Jesus said, I have other sheep not of this fold. Meaning he had the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, but also the northern kingdom of Israel that scattered. So all the people that are being ministered to in the scriptures are Hebrew Israelites. No one else was meant being ministered to. The word of God didn't go to anyone outside of Israel. You have to understand that. But people don't understand that. So these strange cities is talking about Israel. The northern kingdom of Israel that scattered. And Paul said, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Verse 12. Whereupon I, as I went to Damascus with authority... And commission from the chief priest. <laughs> so Paul said, <laughs> I had the right to do what I was doing. I got authority and I was commissioned from the chief priest. So I could do exactly what I wanted and nobody could stop me. Verse 13. <laughs> and at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. <laughs> so Paul was thinking, nobody can stop me, what I'm doing. I'm putting anybody and everybody that I find into prison. But at midday, he kept on telling his testimony. I saw this light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. It was so bright. I couldn't see anything shining around about me and, and them which journeyed with me. He said, this light was everywhere. I couldn't see a thing. Verse 14. And when we were all fallen to earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why, persecu why persecuted thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. <laughs> so Paul is still continuing his testimony. He said that he heard a voice Speaking in the Hebrew tongue. <laughs> Abraham was a Hebrew. Isaac was a Hebrew. Jacob was a Hebrew. All of Israel, because of Abraham, are Hebrew. They all speak in the Hebrew tongue. Jesus is a Hebrew of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. That's why Jesus was speaking in the Hebrew tongue to Saul. Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. 
you trying to do my will, but you 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 you're fighting against me. How can you do my will if you're fighting against me? <laughs> Verse fifteen, and I said, "Who art thou, Lord?" He said, "I'm Jesus, whom thou persecuted." So Paul would say, "Well, who are you? <laughs> who am I persecuting?" And Jesus, it's me. I'm Jesus. That's who you persecuted. <laughs> Verse 16, but rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and those things in the which I will appear unto thee. So Jesus tell Saul, uh, and Saul is giving his testimony what Jesus was saying to him. He said, he appeared to him for this reason, to make him a minister and a witness before the things which thou hast seen and the things which he will appear unto to him for. So that's why Paul was a minister. Uh, was, Jesus appeared unto him to make him a minister, to show him without any doubt. Look, it's me. It's Jesus. I'm alive. I'm not dead. I rose from the dead. <laughs> And you're persecuting me. Now I'm calling you to be a minister. You want to serve me? You're going to serve me. <laughs> Verse 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. So Paul was continuing his testimony. This is what Jesus said was going to happen. And this is what's happening. He's delivering me from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I send thee. So Paul is being delivered from the people. Who are the people? The people are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, the southern kingdom. And also people of the northern kingdom that that against him. But also the, the, the Japhet Gentiles of Rome. So you have to always take everything in context. Unto whom now I send thee. So, because Paul was dealing with everybody. He was dealing with the Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, the Jews. But he was sent to minister unto the Gentiles, the Israelite Gentiles of the northern kingdom. But he was also a Roman citizen, so he's tied up into the Roman court system. <laughs> So he has to deal with those set of Gentiles. There's two set of Gentiles. It's the Japhet Gentiles, which is the ruling class, which are the Romans. And then there's the Israelite Gentiles, which are scattered, that are amongst the Gentiles. <laughs> that are amongst the, the Japhet Gentiles. Go back and research the scriptures, because if you don't, all of what I'm saying is going to sound strange because you haven't studied the scriptures. Verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So he, this is what Paul was saying that Jesus said unto him. That to, this is what you need to do, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light. To turn who? The, southern, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, both of them. But mainly, when he said, said I'm going to send you to the Gentiles, he was referring to the northern kingdom of Israel that, that sinned against the Lord that scattered amongst the Gentiles. To turn, open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. Because the northern kingdom of Israel, they had sinned against the Lord so much. Lord, I'm, I'm scattering y'all amongst the Gentiles. They was worshiping the devil. So the Lord is sending Paul to preach unto them, to turn them from Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them. Among who? Among the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, the Jews, which are sanctified by faith, that is in me, that is in Jesus Christ. So this is what that scripture, verse 18, is packs a lot, but that's what it's talking about. 
but you got to go back, reread, research the scriptures to see if what I'm saying is true. Because in these scriptures, if you don't understand that the scriptures are about Israel from Genesis to Revelation, you're not going to understand the scriptures. You're, not, you're going to misinterpret the scripture, and many do. That's why we have these 501c3 corporations, antichrist church system with these fake pastors, preachers, and teachers. They don't understand the scriptures. They out for their own gain, <laughs> just lovers of money. They're not teaching the scriptures properly, and they're deceiving the people. Jesus didn't come to start a, a, a religion. He did, didn't come to start Christianity. He only came for Israel. Verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Paul is still testifying. He said, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. What Jesus said unto me, that's what I've been doing and that's what I'm doing now. Verse 20, but show us first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and to do works meet for repentance. <laughs> so Paul was continually continuing telling uh, King Agrippa, Once he got converted, first he was ministering unto them of Damascus, preaching the word. As soon as he got converted, I'm, I'm preaching. <clears throat> so he was preaching in Damascus, then he went to Jerusalem, then throughout all the coast of Judea, and then he went to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Again, the Gentiles are the northern kingdom of Israel. They were referred to as Israel or Ephraim. And then when they sinned against the Lord, the Lord scattered them amongst the Gentiles. And they were referred to as Gentiles or whatever location that they were living in. Greece, Greek, or Romans, Rome, or Samaria, Samaritans, Canaan, Canaanites, wherever they were. That's what they were referred to as. That they should repent and turn to God. Talking about Israel. And do the works meet for repentance. It's not talking about everybody else in the whole wide world. And people keep trying to teach and preach that. That's in error. And if you believe that, you're in error. And if you're preaching that, you're in error. It's only for Israel. Verse 21. But these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple... And went about to kill me. <laughs> so Paul is telling them. The Jews. They didn't like what I was saying. That Jesus is the son of God. That he's the savior of Israel. They didn't like that I was also preaching unto the Gentiles. The northern kingdom of Israel that scattered. So that's why they're going about to kill me. The Jews are the Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. They don't, those are the ones, some of those, those are the ones that don't believe. Not all of them, but some of them. Like, that's how they got disciples. If all of them, they wouldn't have, wouldn't even be no disciples. So all of them didn't believe. Like the scripture said, Jesus came unto his own. Who is his own? Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Judah. That's his own. And it says his own received him not. Who is his own? Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. They called Jews. His own received him not. But as many as received him. Who received him? Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. They received him. Some of them didn't but some of them did. And as many as of them did to them. Gave he power to become the sons of God. It's not talking about everybody else in the whole wide world. Verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God. I continue unto this day. Witnessing both to small and great. Saying none other things than those 
which the prophets and Moses did say should come. So Paul said, look, this is all I've been doing from then until now until this day with the help of the Lord, with the help of God, I've been witness to, witnessing to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and what Moses said that should come to pass. And that's all I've been doing. Verse 23, that Christ should suffer, that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentile. So that's what Paul said he's preaching. He's preaching Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven, that he should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. So Jesus was suffering for Israel. He died for Israel and he rose for Israel. And he should be a light to the people. Who are the people? The people are the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin that are called Jews. And the northern kingdom of Israel that's Is they call Israel or Ephraim. But they sin against the Lord and are scattered amongst the Gentiles who are called Gen referred to as Gentiles. Those are the Gentiles mentioning here. It's Israel. It's not everybody else in the whole wide world. People want to hang that. See, Paul, Paul preached to everybody else. No, he preached to Israel that was scattered. Verse 24. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doeth make thee mad. <laughs> so Festus, he was the governor, and he was listening to what Paul said. He's also a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. He don't really like what Paul's saying, so he said, you beside yourself. Much learning have made you mad. <laughs> he don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. He doesn't accept Jesus died on the cross and, and was raised again on the third day. He doesn't accept Jesus as the Messiah. So he's telling Paul, you beside yourself, much, much learning have made you mad. Verse 25, but he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Paul corrected him. He said, look, I'm not mad, most noble Festus. He was always courteous and polite. He said, I'm not mad. The words that I speak are the words of truth and soberness. Verse 26. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, but this thing was not done in a corner. So Paul goes on to say, the, uh, the, thing, the king, King Agrippa, know what I'm talking about. He, that's why I'm speaking so freely. I'm persuaded that none of the things are hidden from him. Everything that I've said, he already know everything about it. and not Because none of this was done in a corner. It wasn't done undercover. Everybody knows exactly what's going on. Verse 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. <laughs> so Paul asked King Agrippa, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you done heard the word, but do you believe it? He went on to say, I know you, you, you believe it. You may not want to confess that you do, but you know you do. Verse 28, then Agrippa said to Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So King Agrippa, he listening to what Paul is saying. He said, almost you persuade me to be a Christian. Now, this word Christian comes from the Rome. They the ones start calling the disciples Christians at Corinth. That's just a, a derogatory term because that's what they called them. It wasn't something that the disciples called themselves. And so that's where King Agrippa got this term from. Almost you persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul did never call himself a Christian. None of the disciples never called themselves a Christian. The scripture said that they, they was called Christians first at Corinth. So King Agrippa is the one using the term Christian. Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. But they were disciples. They were followers of Jesus. Jesus didn't come to start a religion. 
He didn't come to start Christianity. He come to save his people, Israel, from their sin. Verse 29, Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am except these bonds. So Paul is saying, look, I agree with you, King Agrippa. I, uh, I, would, I wish to God that everybody that's hearing me was as I am. I'm a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a follower. I'm a disciple. Y'all want to call me a Christian? So be it. If that's what y'all calling me all together, such as I am, except for these buns. But Paul wasn't saying that I'm a Christian. He didn't call himself a Christian. He never did. None of his disciples called themselves a Christian. Jesus didn't come to start Christianity. But everybody want to hold on to that. You keep holding on to it. When you stand before the Lord, he's going to say, I never knew you. Because he didn't come to start Christianity. He's only coming back for Israel. I'm telling you who Israel is. And you're looking at me like I'm talking Greek. <laughs> How can you be Israel? Because you think the people over in the land called the nation of Israel, you think they are Israel. You've been brainwashed. <laughs> they stole your identity. So you think they Israel. You just a... African American. You're not just an African American. You are Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. And if you would study out the scriptures, you would know the scriptures is our history. It tells us exactly who we are. Verse 30. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor and Bernice and they that sat with them. So after Paul had spent finished speaking, <laughs> all these high-ranking <laughs> gubernatory people, uh, the, the ruling class of Israel, the king, the governor, they all rose up. <laughs> Verse 31, And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, this man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. <laughs> so they stood up and was leaving out and talking amongst themselves, listening to Paul. They're like, well, I didn't hear nothing that he said that make him worthy of death, that put him in jail for. Why is he in bond? Why, is, why, why, why are they trying to kill him? <laughs> they didn't hear anything that, that, Paul said that would accuse him of, to, of, of committing a crime. Verse 32, Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. So uh, uh, Agrippa is saying to Festus, Well, he may have been set at liberty if he didn't appeal to Caesar because I don't really see anything why he's being held. But since he appealed to Caesar, I guess he got to go to Caesar. So he got to still be held in bond. But and, but Paul had a reason to be appealed to Caesar because they wanted to bring him back to Jerusalem. And if they had did that, they would have killed him. So he, that's why he had to appeal to Caesar. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.